So imagine this future hypothetical. You're looking for a file and you realize it's been deleted for good. It's not in the recycle bin. Some program must have erroneously deleted it or maybe you did it yourself because you don't know what you're doing. It happens to all of us. So what do you do? Well, obviously you should go to your backup copy. What's that? You don't have a backup copy after years of watching me and me telling you to do that? So what do you do then? Well, you have to probably last resort, go to some sort of file recovery program. Now there's several of them out there. One example is Recover. That's a good one. However, today's video is about a Windows tool that is somewhat official because it was released by Microsoft itself, and it is the Windows file recovery tool. So you can download it now. It's on the Windows App Store. Before we get into the rest of the video though, I do want to shout out myself for sponsoring this video. I have some new merch, which is actually pretty popular. It's a face mask, specifically a subnet mask. Get it? So considering how many places are requiring masks these days, at least in the United States, you can flex your computer knowledge. This is a pretty comfortable mask. It is 100% polyester on the outside shell and 100% cotton on the inside. It's also made in the United States, which I think is pretty important, and it seems to work really well. It comes in a few different colors. This is the black and white version. So if you want to pick it up, I'll put the link in the description to Teespring where you can order it and check it out. Now this tool is brand new and Microsoft didn't even announce it when they released it. It just kind of showed up one day and there's actually support pages on Microsoft.com for it. So it seems like they are going to be developing it further, but basically there are a couple caveats you have to know about. First of all, at the moment, it's command line only. So if you're afraid of the command prompt, then you might not want to do this. You might want to look at something easier with the GUI like Recover, like I mentioned. However, in the packages, apparently there is a folder called GUI with a file called winfrui.exe. So it does seem like they're gonna be adding a UI to it eventually. So it's probably good to get familiar with yourself with this tool for now. The other major caveat is that it does require the latest major update to Windows, which was released in the first half of this year, version 2004, also known as build 19041. Now, if you don't know which build you have, don't worry. If you go to the Microsoft Store and try to download this app, it will not let you if you don't have this latest version. Anyway, let's get into the fun stuff talking about the actual program. So as a little bit of background, you may not realize that when you delete a file, even after you delete it from the recycle bin, it's not technically gone from the hard drive. Basically, the drive's firmware will mark the file as deleted, so then that amount of space that it was using can be used by something else and eventually gets overwritten. So as long as the drive is still functioning and the file has not been overwritten yet, you can typically recover that file. And the reason I'm telling you this is so you understand and why it's very important if you do realize that you deleted a file permanently that you want to recover, you need to make sure that you do not use that drive for anything because if that file does get overwritten, then you're screwed. And you might not realize what the operating system is doing in the background, especially if it is the main drive. Windows might be writing miscellaneous stuff, temporary files to the drive in the background, even when you're not doing anything. And if it happens to write over that space, then you're kind of screwed. So if the file is important enough, what I would usually recommend is probably just turn off the computer until you have a plan and you know what you're gonna do. And ideally, maybe even take that drive out of the computer, plug it into another computer where you run the file recovery software. That way, when it's plugged in, it's not gonna be the main drive, nothing's gonna be writing to it. So hopefully you know what you're doing. If not, maybe just go to a professional, but that's not the point of the video. Let's get back to the actual Windows file recovery tool that we're supposed to be talking about. So on the help page, it actually describes how there's a few different modes that this tool can operate in. It's actually pretty interesting. So the first is the default mode, then there's the segment mode, and the signature mode. So by default, the description here says, this mode uses the master file table to locate lost files. Default mode works when the master file table and file segments, also called file record segments, are present. And you can basically think of the master file table kind of like a table of contents that the drive has where it lists all the locations and some other data about each individual file. Even after the file is deleted, at least for a little while, that information may still stick around. The next mode is called segment and is described as, this mode does not require the master file table but does require segments. Segments are summaries of file information that the NTFS, that's the file system typically used by Windows, stores in the master file table such as name, date, size, type, and cluster allocation unit index. You don't have to know that. Basically the file segment, if the master file table is the table of contents, a file segment is basically an entry in the table of contents. And the final mode is kind of like the more advanced one called the signature mode. And this says, this mode only requires the data is present. It searches for specific file types 
and doesn't work for very small files. For non-NTFS storage devices, only signature mode is supported. So basically, if that table of contents is somehow corrupted and doesn't know where the file was, you can literally do a sector by sector scan of the drive and look for anything that exists as a whole file and it will try to recover it. I imagine this would probably take a lot longer, but it would maybe be your last resort. And it also says that if it's a external drive that doesn't use NTFS, like a FAT32 thumb drive or something like that, you have to use this mode. So let's take a look at what this actually looks like when you go to use it. So if you go into the Windows Store and just click launch or run it from searching in the start menu, it'll just bring up the command prompt and run the file. And when you run it without any parameters by just typing in winfr, and you can do this even if you don't launch it. If you just open up the command prompt and type winfr, it will automatically detect that file and run it. And it will just show you the help documentation, like the basic usage of it. So here you can see at the top it says usage and it says winfr and then you type the source drive and then the destination folder where you want to output it and then some switches or additional parameters and then it lists some of those parameters down below that you can use. For example, the different modes, you can use slash n to filter results for either a file type or a certain destination there where the file you believe was located and then some other stuff you can see here including some examples. But anyway, I did my own example. So I typed in winfr and then I'm gonna search on the C drive and then I'll output it to a folder I created called D recovery folder. And then I'm not looking for anything in particular, so I'm just gonna randomly search for deleted files in the download folder. So I did slash n to filter, and then C users downloads folder. Now I would definitely recommend if you're looking for a specific file, you probably want to filter by that specific file type, because as you'll see, it found a ton of different files that I didn't need. And you'll also notice I didn't put in a parameter for the mode, so it's just gonna run in default mode. But if I wanted to do segment mode, for example, I would do slash r, and if I wanted to do signature, I would do slash x. And then I can also use the slash exclamation mark to bring up some advanced settings like including system files which are not shown by default. There's also some other file types which are not shown by default. I think maybe like DLL files, something like that. So if I wanted to include every possible one, then I would use something like that. And then how it works is after you run the command, it will just recover anything it finds within the filters that you set. So if you didn't set a filter for the location where it was downloaded, or you didn't set any file types or anything, it's just gonna recover every single file it finds that has been deleted. And as you can see, I didn't filter for any file types and I just searched anything in the downloads folder. And apparently there was a lot of them and it found nearly 15,000 files in there. So I kind of stopped it before it went all the way. It would also ask you what you wanted to do if it found duplicates. So you had a few options there. You would just press the key to select. So for example, you'd press K to keep both, or you could press B to keep both for everything going forward. And also, if you look in the actual recovery folder that you set for the output of all the recovered files, it seemed to actually organize the different files are recovered into categories. So for example, the ones I found at least were documents, which had like text files, miscellaneous, and then pictures. So any JPEGs, PNGs went in the pictures folder. So at least it was sort of organized into what it recovered. So yeah, it's a pretty simple bare bones program at the moment, but it does work. And I imagine Microsoft is gonna be adding to it. If you run it, it does show that the version is 0.0.11761. So it seems like it's an early version and they didn't really announce too much about it. They just kind of released it onto the store. So I'm assuming they're gonna be adding features, including a GUI at some point. So it will definitely be nice to have a hopefully fully featured file recovery software that is pretty much official from Microsoft. Maybe they'll even build it into Windows. For most people, I probably would not recommend it because there is no GUI and I'm sure a lot of people are a little bit worried about the command line. And obviously you can't really look through and pick which files you wanna recover, it just does all of them at once. Whereas I believe with other file recovery programs, you can kind of see which ones it finds, so you can look to see if the one you're looking for is even in there. However, this might be useful for, I don't know, bigger organizations where you have to run this on a bunch of different computers at once. Maybe you can create a script which can automatically, using PowerShell, just recover all the files of some particular name you can probably imagine if you're in that industry how this might be useful since it's command line, but still, it's good to know about, something to keep an eye on for the future, even if you're a regular user. So not much more to say about in this video. If you guys wanna keep watching, the next video I would recommend is talking about the task manager, some secrets in there revealed by the guy who actually wrote it. So I read through that red thread, definitely some interesting stuff right there. You can just click on that right there. So thanks so much for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video.